All right. We're uh, thrilled to be able to have Allison Moratis here from Moratis Counseling. Great to have you here, Allison. Thanks for having me. Um, boy, this has been a long, tough couple of years. <laughs> and uh, I, I, in my role, um, in my, my real life in a, in a church uh, situation, I, uh, I've also have seen this so evident uh, that it has taken its toll on our collective mental health. Um, and this last week or so um, with the Ukraine-Russian conflict, it I, I can't imagine that this past week has done wonderful things for our collective mental health. How, how are people dealing with this? Oh, yeah, I mean, I think we can all empathize. And I say this all through this as a therapist. This is the first time in my career where there's stuff going on in real time that's quite acute, quite serious, that we're all going through together. Um, and I think, yeah, it just feels like one blow after the other. And I mean, really, it's a trauma. We are going through successive traumas. We've gone through traumas throughout the pandemic as things have changed. And we've had to deal with, uh, you know, just getting used to the fact that we can't control everything. We couldn't control it before the pandemic. But I think we have this evidence now that that's that's a real thing. And we have to, you know, cultivate that ability to be aware of how we're responding to things um, when, you know, depression, anxiety, just overall strong emotions are cropping up for us. And then we have this happening. Um, and just the society we live on in being inundated with images, it's just hard not to escape it and not to feel. One of the things that I've found is that in the past, if somebody was dealing with a struggle, they would be able to go, and I'm dealing with this. But in the last couple of years, it's almost like they'll look at you and go, ah, and yeah. go, it's all of it. How do you, where do you start in, 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 in this, in this scenario we find ourselves in? I think just that, that realizing it's, it's all of it. It's all the things. It will hit us differently from one minute to the next, one day to the next, um, let alone all the things we had going on for us before all of this started, right? We, we were not problem free. Um, so for a lot of people, um, you know, dealing with the day-to-day -day stressors of life, uh, good stuff, bad stuff, then we have these things hitting us. Um, we have to acknowledge it. So pretending it's not happening doesn't work. Um, not acknowledging feelings and then wondering why you're, you know, really angry or just breaking out in tears. Um, that doesn't work either. So speaking about it, sharing it, uh, the feelings and really being honest with the feelings, even if you're not comfortable sharing, journaling the feelings, kind of I, like we call it name it to tame it. So kind of identifying what the feeling is of the day. Um, and it can go anything from, you know, just frustration, anger, despair, the um, overwhelm that comes with feeling helpless, um, we go all over the map. So at least being able to say, what am I feeling right now? How is that manifesting itself in how I am uh, behaving, how I am managing those emotions, how my body is responding? Um, that's a really big part of coping um, because it's just impossible to go on a straight line and with blinders on and not see and feel what's happening. I have to imagine that sometimes people are, are dealing with a lot and then things like this Russia Ukraine conflict happens and they go, Oh my goodness, this is even so far more out of my control and go, even though it's not happening to them, it feels like it's happening to them. Like how do people deal? What, what do you encourage people to do when they, when they get that overwhelmed, this is all too much. What's, what's, what's step one, two for actual self-care in, in that type of moment? Yeah, good question. Um, definitely, um, in the world we live in, you can be inundated with images from various sources from for 24-7. It can be relentless. So I really think a big step that all of us can take is deciding on how we're going to limit that consumption of information and images. Um, so my suggestions are things like really be intentional about when you're going to watch the news and update yourself. So for example, don't go to bed with the news playing and falling asleep with these images and sounds. Don't wake up to it. Um, don't listen to a podcast on politics when you're trying to get your exercise. Um, you know, watching TV, CNN while you're eating dinner. Like being really intentional, say, okay, I'm going to watch the six o'clock news for a half an hour, get my update and turn it off. Um, and then really our bodies 
crave structure and routine and being nurtured and predictability. So don't forget to do all the things that we do. We need to do every day to stay mm. healthy, right? So, you know, the sleep, as I mentioned, sleep is key because it's very difficult to regulate emotions if you're not well rested. But how, you know, eating, making sure you're not watching this and just shoving your face with, with food, being intentional about keeping yourself healthy, all these things that I know we all know, but we forget when we're in crisis, right? Drinking water and sharing and being with people who understand, maybe empathize, or at least can be a good source of support when you're just feeling like it's too much. Um, I think, um, and I'm sure you'll, you'll agree, sometimes uh, people uh, use social media as their frustration outlet, and that rarely turns out well. Uh, <laughs> how, how should people be regulating and be interacting with social media in a time where there is such heightened tension? Definitely uh, a good point. I mean, I think through, through the pandemic, I think all of us can understand whatever age we are, everybody's turned to that as a way to numb or a way to pass time when our options for passing time were limited. Um, so it's become habitual um, and almost addictive for some people to find out what's being talked about and commenting on it. My biggest advice for all of that, whether it's social media commenting or face-to-face -face commenting is take a breath and take a step back before you respond. And ask yourself some questions. Um, is this going to enhance my life by putting this response out there? Do I want to give more time and energy to the responses back and reading the feedback? Um, is that something that I really need to put my finite resources toward? Because we are all, and most of us do, you know, scroll social media when we're tired. Yeah. when we are depleted. So sometimes it is very easy to just have this like knee jerk reaction. I'm angry. I'm going to put this out there and get a response. And then really all of a sudden feel regret yeah. and feel, you know, even heightened anger. Yeah. Just about a minute to go, but I want to ask you, um, how can we reassure our kids? Because I think many of us with, with kids, we see it in them and go, Oh, I just wish I could take this away from you. You know, the, 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 right. the stress, how should we reassure our kids during these times? Good question. Um, it's so difficult for kids to understand. And I think kids, again, just have so much exposure to things. Um, making sure that you're having the conversation with your children when you're good to have it. So if you've just come off watching disturbing images, don't have the conversation when you're feeling really emotional. Set aside a time. Don't dismiss them, but say, hey, why don't we talk about this on Saturday afternoon? Uh, we'll go for a walk and you can ask me some questions about what's going on. And then thinking about responding in ways that are age appropriate. So if you have young kids, just very simply explaining conflict, letting them know that things like this have happened in the past. So giving them a bit of context that this is not brand new, that we all hope that this turns out well over time. Yeah. And then with older kids, engaging them, talking about their opinions and giving them a chance to talk about the opinions and how these things are making them feel. Yeah. So uh, at three, a, a exhaustive history of Eastern European politics, maybe wait a few years. That's, that's probably really good. not. Yeah, really, really <laughs> great advice. Thanks so much for your time, Allison, uh, from uh, Meritos Counseling. And um, boy, I'm sure you're doing a wonderful job. And it's not an easy thing being a counselor during this time uh, either. And so take care We're of yourself as best. well. All right. All okay. Right. Thanks.